at all times. Any unattended baggage will be removed and may be destroyed by security services. Good evening ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this Dadrail livestream on the East Coastway, a route I am currently learning in real life, so this could be interesting. We will be starting at 20.30, that's 20.30 by the station clock, so that's approximately 8 minutes time. Mind the gap between the train and the platform. Mind the gap. Thank you. 
Good evening once again ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Stadrail live stream on the East Coastway, a route I am currently learning in real life. We will be starting when the station clock says 2030, so you've got about three and a half minutes. Grab your drinks and light refreshments, and if you know anyone that might enjoy this stream, please do invite them in. Passengers are reminded that smoking is prohibited at all stations and on all train services. This includes e-cigarettes.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How are we all? Hope you are all very well this evening. I am just checking my mic is working and that I am coming through loud and clear. Looks like I am at my end. Let me know at your end if I am. I'm going to assume that everything's working. <laughs> the last couple of streams I've had lots of technical difficulties, but I'm just going to assume it's working and I am going to crack on. So, thank you very much for joining me tonight. We've got Dan's Diggers, East Midland Trains, Tiger Trains, William Transportation, uh, Stu, Arthur's Transport Productions, Toby Hancock, Johnny Simulator Gaming, TR9, welcome. Uh, Theo, Bowen Potato, Davidoff, Sam Brooks, hello. Sorry if I've uh, sorry if I've missed you there. I think I've got everyone who's in the chat there. So great to see so many of you in tonight. First stream I've done in a little while. So guys, uh, this week I've had a little bit of route learning on the East Coastway route between Eastbourne and Brighton. So I thought, what better to do than jump in trains in world and kind of drive the route in there with the little bit of knowledge I've acquired. I haven't finished my route learning, but with the little bit of knowledge I've acquired um, over the route so far and kind of see um, how that sort of comes together, whether you can use the simulator to aid the route learning process or not. I just thought it'd be quite, a, quite an interesting experiment to do. So before we jump in, and as always, guys, all the views and opinions are in this video, <laughs> expressed in this video, are my own and may not reflect those of any companies I may be employed by or associated with. We're going to be playing all the usual games tonight. We are back to having Locomotive Location Livery. Let's play Locomotive Livery Location. And tonight's picture has been sent in by Logan. This one was sent in uh, quite a long time ago. I think it's a tough one, but I always think they're tough and they never are. So <laughs> uh, there we go. We're also going to be jumping in and out of the Discord server. So if you want to post your pictures in the Discord server, you can do. There is an invitation link in the description below, and we are in the live stream pictures page. Incidentally, guys, if you are in the Discord server, I have a little bit of news for you. Uh, I was recently approached by the Roblox uh, SCR community um, team and asked if I would like to make some join their uh, content creators program and make some content. Um, of course, I simply couldn't turn that down, so I'm not particularly particularly au fait with SCR and Roblox and how all that works. So as soon as this stream is finished, I'm going to be doing a stream on the Discord server uh, where a couple of people are going to be talking me through Roblox and sort of introducing me to it. So if you do want to join in that one afterwards, you're more than welcome to, um, and that'll be a more casual kind of all chat to each other over in the Discord server. Anyway, that is enough chat from me. Let's jump into the game. And then I will see if I can answer some of your questions on the way. Right, we'll do a nice sunny run in the 377. We'll do a Brighton to Eastbourne. Yeah, we'll do Brighton to Eastbourne. Then we'll do Eastbourne back to Brighton. And if we've got time, we might jump in the 313 and do a little trip down to Lewis. Because we do like a 313. So, semi-fast Hastings as far as Eastbourne. So, one goal, 3-6. That one will do there. 37 minute run. Lawrence Adams, good evening, Davrail and family. Good evening, Lawrence. Matthew, hello. Welcome to the stream. It is just loading up. Kentish Train Guy, good evening. How are we doing, bud? Great to have you here. Ecoops123, bonjour. Bonjour. Glad to catch you live. I only found you the other day where I managed to watch quite a good number of interesting vids. Great to find a driver with a passion in the local Hastings region. Thank you very much. So here we are, 377... 465. 377465. Let's start. Safety systems in. All of them in, especially the DRA. And let's get a key in. Let's put some game audio on as well so you can hear what you're doing because I always forget to do that. Let me know if the game's coming through loud and clear, guys, or if you want the game volume up. Uh, I can do that for you. And open the doors on the right hand side. So, what are we doing? Right, lights. Uh, day running. Tail lamps are off. We can jump outside and just check they are good. The customer information center system or P, uh, passenger information system, PIS, is working properly. Uh, we've got a proceed aspect. We, we can't see the signal, but we know we've got a proceed aspect because the banner repeater is in the off position. Uh, and we are all ready to go, just waiting for some sort of dispatch. 
So let's just check the timetable. Where are we stopping? So we're stopping at Falmer, Lewis, Berwick, Polgate, Hampden Park, and finally Eastbourne. Johnny Simulator Gaming coming through loud and clear. Perfect. TR9, hopefully we don't get a re replay of the 484 stream. Yeah, my uh, my phone has been turned off. So <laughs> that's not going to happen. All right, load passengers, lock doors. Here we go. So 25 leaving Brighton. We need an E on the theatre box at the end of the platform. So we know we've got the signal to leave. We know we've got the signal because the banner repeat is in the off position. But we don't know what route indicator we've got yet. So there's still a possibility we could be wrong routed. So if you're going up the main line, you'd get an M if you're going up towards Preston Park, Hayward Teeth and Victoria. We're going around the East Coastway, so we need an E in the theatre box. Matthew Rice, will you be working for GBRF on the East Coastway in the future? Yes, yeah, so the training I'm doing at the moment, Matthew, is for the um, railhead treatment trains and the snow and ice treatment trains in the season. So there we go, green and an E, we are 25 out station. Next stop, Falmer, four car train. So yeah, come, come the season, I should be doing quite a lot of work. I say quite a lot of work, as much work as I'm needed to do um, along the East Coastway route. I also need to sign the Aran Valley in the West Coastway, but um, it's, it's kind of hit and miss for time, whether I get time to do that this year or not. We're quite busy at the moment, uh, which, is, which is nice. The Mighty Woosh, oh gosh, I don't miss driving Electra Stars. <laughs> It's funny you should say that, because being out route learning this week, I've spent a lot of time on the Electra Stars, and I, I kind of think I miss them a little bit in a weird sort of way. So we're London Road Viaduct up to 30 miles an hour. Beautiful. So 35 over 55, so the differential speed there, 35 applying to uh, class 6 and 7 trains. And 55 applying to uh, all other trains. So for me as a freight driver, I've got the 35 there, um, then I've got a differential 45 in a little while. So there's not, not a great deal of speed for me to remember as a freight driver on this route. I've, I've only had a day, I've only had about two, maybe three, I think I've had three trips over this route, officially route learning. Um, so my knowledge of it is not quite spot on yet. Hey Joe, welcome to the stream. Can we get some love for Joe, British Ace in the chat? Top, top chappy. So we've got the coasting board on our left there, we've just gone past. We are not stopping at Morskim, so we don't need to worry about that. So we are uphill all the way to the other side of Falmer Tunnel. Um, we then drop down into Lewis. So the gradient from Falmer Tunnel down into Lewis is really steep and there's a local instruction that says you must carry out a running brake test before going down the gradient at Falmer just to check that your brakes are working. So there we are, 45 over 70. Bowen Potato, so the longest route um, the wrongest route you ever learned. So you tend to learn routes in um, sections. So sort of saying point A to point B, you sort of might learn, for example, if I take Tunbridge to Southampton, um, you sort of learn, you learn like Tunbridge to Barnes, which would be one section of the route, because then you can go via Hounslow um, up to Acton. You then might learn down to Woking, you then might learn to Basingstoke, and then on to then on Eastleigh, and then Southampton. So um, you tend to sort of learn routes in, in sections, as it were. So the long, the longest route we, we regularly do, or I regularly do, would be Tunbridge to Southampton. But I mean, I sign us down as far as Ashford, Hastings. Um, so potentially, I could do a, a Hastings to Southampton or an Ashford to Southampton. So even though that's not something regularly we do, that is a, a route I could possibly take. So, Falmer is 0.9 miles away. Yeah, Joe's got the speeds down already. Look at that. You haven't got the freight speeds there, Joe. Those, those are the ones I need. <laughs> it's pretty much 45 all the way freight-wise. 
35 at London Road and 45 all the way freight wise which is uh, pretty pretty easy Vex SG yeah I've only this week I've joined the um, SCR content creators program so I've not created any content on SCR as yet so Kentish train guy um, who is in the stream has kindly offered to talk me through uh, Roblox and SCR after this stream and that's going to be over in the discord server so we're into Falmer, we are forecast for the four car mark. Sam, what's the longest time you can drive without brakes? That all depends on your company and instructions, Sam. Um, so in my company, we're allowed to drive, I think it's six hours, and you have to have a minimum of a 20 minute break. I think so most passenger companies, you have to have a half an hour break within the first five hours of your job, um, but it depends on the individual company. So we are four on four. Open the door. Let's play a game. Post your numbers now for locomotive livery location. Vex SG, welcome to the cool club. <laughs> Loading passengers. Toby Hancock, I'm also available to talk you through SCR. We look forward to seeing what you produce. Thank you very much, Toby, and thank you for the invite to the program. Really appreciate that. It's something lots of people in the community have been asking me for for a very long time. Um, so it's a bit of a kick up the backside to, to get out there and make some content on it. We are off to Lewis. Still going uphill at the moment till we get to the other side of the tunnel. Green signal. Right, what are we doing? The British Ace. Joe, you are the third one on my screen with number three. Let's play Locomotive Livery Location. So I'm going to reveal box number three. Guys, you have got ten seconds to tell me the livery, locomotive, locomotive livery and location of the uh, image behind. Any ideas? The British Ace loves Roblox. <laughs> Fixbow, class 91, King's Cross. So just gone past the substation, that is where the, the uh, line starts falling. So we can have a running brake test there, just put the brakes in, make sure they're working as, as they should be. Which is all good. So our next speed is going to be 55, uh, which is just after um, the A27 overpass. Matthew Rice, class 91 at King's Cross. Dusty Railjet. It is UK based, Dusty, I can tell you. I've just lied to you because we've just gone past a 35 freight speed. <laughs> I told you I've only had a couple of trips on this. I'm not, I haven't got the speeds down yet. Mr. Quicko Gaming. Dadbro, have you ever driven via stains as I've seen GBRF there before? Yeah, quite a lot, Mr. Quicko. Um, I do the 4 Yankee 1 9 Gypsum run um, quite often. So yeah, I go through stains quite a lot. It's, it's quite possible that I've waved to you as I've been through there. Then you'll have the Diddy Kingston Tunnel, says Joe. Yeah. Has anyone got... This is going to be a really weird question. Does anyone have any favourite names of tunnels or stations or junctions? I'd be really interested to hear if you've got got any uh, any favourite names of stations, tunnels or junctions. I'll tell you what mine is. My, my favourite tunnel name used to be Popham. Popham 1 and Popham 2 near Mitchell Deaver on the southwestern main line. And then when I signed the Tattenham Corner branch, there's a tiny little tunnel called Hopperty Tunnel. Um, that now wins the award as my, my favourite tunnel, Hopperty. So yeah, I'd be really interested to hear if anyone's got any favourite junctions, junction names, tunnel names, or anything like that. Oh, 
Ah, uh, yeah, Mr. Quicko, that train comes for a bit before 4. I think it's about 2.45, 14.45 or something like that. So there's the A27 overpass. Our 55 starts just beyond that. So we're going to get some break in. There's our 55. We're going downhill as well, so I'm going to slow down to 50 and let it roll up. Dan's Diggers, Bo Peep Tunnel. Always wondered why it's called that. I don't sign the Hastings line. The reason Bo Peep Tunnel and Bo Peep Junction and Bo Peep Signal Box are called such is because when they were built, one of the only buildings in the area was the Bo Peep Inn, um, which is a nice little pub on Hastings Seafront. So that's where the name comes from. Where the pub gets its name from, I couldn't tell you. So the driver I was route learning with the other day, really nice guy called Darren, um, told me not to go past, in a passenger train, said if you go past the next signal doing 30 with the brakes in, uh, you'll be good for the 10 mile an hour speed restriction. So we're going to test that theory now. Oh, Gregosaurus, I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce it. Landfair PG, there you go. Right, well, we're not going to be going past this doing 30, are we? We are, more or less, with the brakes in. So, on our right-hand side, we'll see the ground position light signal, and that is where our 10 starts. So, we'll sight the ground position light signal before we sight the um, actual speed restriction. So, there's a the ground position light signal, and there is our 10. We wave to the other drivers as we go past. Train drivers do wave at one another. If the driver coming the other way doesn't wave at you, you, you sort of think to yourself, miserable sod. <laughs> and we're 10 all the way into the platform. Matthew Rice, in depots, how would you use the guard's signal buzzer? So, you can use the guard's signal buzzer for shunting purposes. But it is very, very rarely used, in all honesty. Um, most shunters will communicate using radios or using the um, cab-to-cab feature on the thing. So using bell buzzers for shunting very rarely happens these days, in my experience. But you've got a list of codes up there you can use. Uh, ready to start, setback, testing doors, slow down, etc, uh, etc. Et but yeah, very rarely used these days. So we are four for the four. Platform is on the left. And there is our four car mark. A little bit of two. Back to one for the final stop. If we can get it in the drop light, we've done well. I think it's on that bracket there. There we go. Just see the bottom of it. That is a good stop. Laser jet overshoots dad rail. Do you also give a blast of the horn to other drivers? Uh, not normally, no. If we go past... I mean, it's a bit naughty really, but if I go past... Say there's a GB train in the sidings and I go past the other way on the main line, I might sort of give a little blast of the horn, but no, generally speaking, we don't. Who wants some tones? Let's have some tones. Nice tones. So, 69 of you lovely people in tonight, if you haven't already, please do hit that like button and consider subscribing. That would be absolutely brilliant. Southeast Rail Productions, good evening, welcome to the stream. Locking the doors at Lewis. So this bit of route here from Lewis to Southern Junction, I already signed this bit, so I've got no excuses. So we're 10 miles an hour out the platform. The lines up to our left go up to um, you go Cooksbridge, Plumpton, and they join onto the Brighton Main Line at a place called Kima Junction, which is. Um, between Burgess Hill and Withersfield. That would be a really nice bit of route to have modelled on train sim, so we can integrate the two routes. I don't think it's technically possible to do it, but it, it would be really good if they could have done. Thomas, good evening. All the trains, I'm good, thank you. How are you? So, speed limit's going to go up to... 
It should be a 40 coming up. Why is he telling me my next one's 60 in 600 odd yards? That's not right. Andy, good evening. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with that speed there. That's... Like I said, there should be a 40 coming up, and then, then we go up to 60. Yes, it's, it's registered on the HUD, but for some reason it's not showing. It's making me question my route knowledge then. <laughs> there we go. Green. So if you're going to um, New Haven, you'll get one yellow on this one. And then you'll get checked down uh, to the next single. There's our 60. Life of John, good evening. Welcome to Dad Row, new subscriber. Great to have you here. So we're up to 60 as we come to Southern Junction. Our next station will be Berwick. So line speed is going to go 60, then up to 70. Uh, then we go up to 90, if I remember rightly. Oh, lots of people chatting away there. Right. Someone asked me earlier, do you drive six Yankee 83 New Haven aggregates to Woking Day aggregates? Um, I'm going to be on that job Friday morning. There, we're speeding now. Look at that. Yeah, so I, I do do that one quite a lot. Yeah, sorry, I must have missed the 40 sign back there, Toby. I knew it was there, though, honestly. <laughs> Yeah, pure lemon, depending on how it goes. We're going to go over to Eastbourne, back to Brighton, then we may do a 3 one free run down to um, down to Seaford, depending on how we're doing time-wise and how many of you lovely people are still here with me. Uh, Alfie, yeah, AWS is turned on. So there used to be a level crossing here called Beddingham back in the day, before the flyover was put in. Used to be a real hotspot for traffic. So there's our 80. So the other side of Glind, we get 90. And the speed, next speed restriction after that will be um, going over the River Cookmere, uh, just to the east of Berwick. So I have learnt something the last couple of days. Gareth Kemp, 84. Good evening. Welcome to the stream. Officially, Charles. Richard, are you driving anything in slash through London soon? Uh, I'm always driving stuff through London, to be honest with you, so drop me a message in the Discord and I can give you more specifics, but yeah, I'm, I'm always driving stuff through London. Uh, officially, Charles, yeah, I won't be going as far as Herne Hill. I'm going to get relieved at uh, Ellswood on that. Just south of Red Hill, so yeah, I won't be taking that all the way. Hey, Joe, I got it right. Brilliant. <laughs> I haven't quite got the level crossing names as well. I need to get the level crossing names. I want to say one of them's Ditchling or Detling or maybe Wilmington. Um, I need to go through my maps and just double check those. That's something you do need to know as part of your route knowledge, just the names of all the, uh, all the level crossings. So, let's play a game. I think it's got to be time for round two. Post your numbers now for locomotive livery location. Holding her at 80. There we go, up to 90. Josh's trains. No, I don't sign the 59. Arthur's Transport Productions. Ellswood is one strange place to be relieved. Yeah, I think the, the main reason we do it at Ellswood, Josh, is because we're all based out of Tunbridge. That's our home depot. Um, so Ellswood's kind of the logical place to relieve. You could relieve at Redhill, which is obviously a bigger station, but there's no guarantee you're going to get a platform. You could be put straight through the through road. Um, so that's why we tend to relieve at Ellswood. Right, we're up to 90. We're going downhill. Who have we got? Andy, Wright and Wilmington. Thank you very much, Andy. <laughs> are, you, are you the very same Andy who will be joining us at GB soon, if you're able to say that? 
Who have we got? Right. Cody, number three. Let's play Locomotive Livery Location. I think we've had number three. We've had number three. Right, we're going to go with the next one, which is Daniel's Trains, number eight. That's giving it away. That's giving it away. Definitely giving it away. <laughs> right, what are we doing for Berwick? 1.2 miles. Rambo, hello from a fellow driver. Hello, bud. Whistleboard there, low tone only. Officially low tone only. Most drivers will use both tones. <laughs> Andy, I might be that Andy, yes. <laughs> You'll love it. That's, that's, that's all I can say on, on a public stream. <laughs> Keith Jones, what graphics card are you using, please? Keith, I've got um, to get the brakes in, otherwise I won't be stopping at Berwick. Uh, I've got an RTX 3090. This is really bad driving, boys and girls, but I am a freight driver, so I don't need to know where the stations are. I'll, I'll never do charter work with that attitude. It's a good stop. Any stop you walk away from is a good stop. And we're back down to brake step one as well. So it's, it's a nice, it's a nice smooth stop. That's an efficient stop. It's using the full braking capabilities of the train. Are we going to get it in the drop light? There we go. That'll do. Right, so we are a four-car train. We're on the four-car mark. Into neutral. Platform is on the left. <laughs> break, break, break. Nah, loads of room. Loads of room. Uh, all the trains. Do you sign any routes through the... Joe, do you sign any routes through the Medway Town? Do you mean Joe or do you mean me? I don't... Uh, I sign as far as Who Junction, Gravesend to Who Junction, then up to the Isle of Grain. Oh, I don't sign down into Medway at the moment. Not just yet, but that is on my uh, my to learn list. Particularly the Medway Valley, um, strewed around to Tunbridge. So we are off to Polegate. So line speed is 90. We get a brief bit of 80 as we go across the River Cookmere, then back up to 90. Uh, and then the next speed after that will be 35 around the corner after Polegate. Let's get her going. I meant you, Richard. Yeah, I, I thought you did. Office Transport Productions. We need GBRF RHTT between Lewis and Brighton. So that's why I'm learning it, Office Transport Productions. We don't have any... Um, there's no booked work. So, so with the RHTTs, you have booked circuits that are booked to run every single day. So that there's trains that are booked to run every single day and they will run regardless. You also then have what they call standby drivers. So at Tunbridge we'll have like a Sussex standby and a Kent standby. You have more than one a day um, on various different shifts. And the idea with the standby drivers is if a driver reports something as being slippery or they're expecting to be some, something to be slippery, um, as a standby driver you can be sent out to go and cover that particular section of line. So all the bits I'm kind of learning now are for the standby jobs. So I can be sent out, you know, oh, we've had reports of low adhesion at Falmer, so they'll ask one of the standby drivers to take the RHTT out um, and go and treat the Falmer area. So yeah, you will you will see us going along there now and again. Officially, Charles, Richard, I found your Roblox account. So <laughs> it's quite funny because my sons have been playing Roblox for, for a little while now. Um, and they created a dad rail account on Roblox and then got locked out of it. So the dad rail name was taken because my sons took it. Um, so I am a dad rail official, I think. <laughs> I've written it down somewhere. So yeah, dad, dad rail official. Right, two master pole gate speed is good. Yeah, Arthur's Transport, that's because the, the MPVs will be booked on the circuit to cover that route. Um, so like I was saying, you've got your booked routes that always run, so that will be covered by an MPV. Um, but we can get sent out there on, sta on standby turns. 
Dan's Diggers. No, I only signed down as far as Ashford, and then I swing a right and then go via a uh, right to Hastings. I don't sign down as far as Dover. Um, I'm in what they call the Sussex link, so most of my route knowledge is in the Su is in Sussex. I do I do sign a fair amount of Kent, um, but sort of nothing east of uh, Gra uh, Gravesend, Who Junction, Isle of Grain, and nothing east of um, Ashford. So there is our warning for the 35. That is also a good place to get the brakes in for Polgate. Are oh, we going to need a bit more break, do we think, there? Am I going to need step three again? No, that's... I'm gonna. We are going downhill slightly. I'm going to have faith. I'm going to leave it. Yeah, Lawrence, I don't do much on TikTok, to be honest with you. I've occasionally put something out. I, I should do a lot more because it's a really good way of gaining followers and sort of getting more traction on the YouTube. Um, but yeah, I don't do a great deal on there at all. So if you're not on my TikTok, then you're not missing out. Um, but if you're not on my TikTok or my other socials, then do go and check those out. Oh, that's going to need a bit of free. Are we going to have faith? We're going to leave it. No, we're going to leave it. We're going to avoid using free. Back to one. A little bit of two. Fanning the brake, which you never want to do. In the drop light. That's a nice stop. I'll take that. Into neutral. I didn't do me free step check there, so 4-4 four, four platform. That sort of thing. Uh, Josh Straits, do Tumbridge drivers work 6 Yankee 4 2, Who Junction to Eastley East Yard? Um, occasionally, Josh, yes, that is normally done by um, Who based drivers, but Tumbridge and Who depots do work very closely together. So occasionally it'll be a Tumbridge driver on that, but it's normally a Who based driver. So yeah, I, I occasionally work that service. I haven't done it for quite a long time, but yeah, some, sometimes I get that on, um, get on that service. Matt Tan, hey Rich Helfings, not notice your smiley face on the Mount Filler Lake. Where you been? Um, depends, Matt. Are you talking about the Mount Field from Mount Field to Tunbridge section or the uh, down to Southampton section? Because I've been on the Southampton bit a fair bit lately. Or it certainly feels like it. Right, we've got a 35 coming up. We are off to Hamden Park. So if I remember rightly, we're going to be 35, 70. Then we drop down to... 55 before respawn, then 25 into the platform. It's 55 or 50. I've got no excuses there because Willingdon Junction to Eastbourne is on my route card. I already signed that pit. There's the 35. Look, I shouldn't have accelerated past it. I should have shot off at the 35 there. It's pretty bad driving. So back in the good old days, we could get a position one off of this signal. We could go around the corner on the Eastbourne avoiding line um, up towards Pevensey and Westham. Right back in the day, we could have gone up towards Howsham and Heathfield and Tunbridge Wells West. So there's our 70 we've just gone past. And off we go. Alfie, have you ever driven a train through Essex? The only time I've driven into Essex, Alfie, was when um, I had to go to Colchester. I was route conducted from Wilston Junction, which is as far as I sign in that direction. Um, I was route conducted from Wilston Junction to Colchester, uh, and I had to pick up two tampers and tow them back to Tunbridge. So yeah, light engine up, pick the tampers up, and then come back again. So that's, yeah, that's the only time I've driven in Essex. Josh Trains, back in 2020, did you drive the Class 701 deliveries? Um, no, Josh. I was I was asked if I wanted to do the 701s, and I was up for it, but then COVID hit, um, and unfortunately, I never got the training I needed to do them. So no, I was, unfortunately, I was never involved with the 701s. So coming around the corner towards Willingdon Junction. This is where I used to live as a child. used to be a semaphore signal before Wellington Junction around here. 
Lord Quas, welcome to Dadra, our new subscriber. I remember just before the junction here, seeing a cl I was in the field on the right there, seeing a class 47 when I was younger, sitting there on a weekend ballast job. Absolutely lovely. We are stopping at Hamden Park, aren't we? So, <laughs> getting carried away, getting nostalgic. It's a good job the 377s have got good brakes on them. This was my local station as a child, Hamden Park. We are four for the four. Ended up coming in a bit slow there. Oh, stopped. Into neutral. Four on the train, four on the platform, platform on the left, open the doors. Superb. Should we play again? Post your numbers now for locomotive livery location. Matt, I usually catch it around Shawford or Eastie, but not noticing. Do you ever get to drive the test trains? I don't know mostly Colas drivers on the 37s, but the 73s must be you guys. Um, incidentally, Matt, no, we don't. We used to drive the 73s, but the locos are actually hired to Colas. So that's still Colas crews on it. Occasionally it'll be a GB crew um, if we're, we're sort of, if Colas have contracted it back to us if they can't cover it. Um, but no, we, we kind of just um, hire the locos to Colas and they cover those. Train Scotter. What is the furthest north you've gone as a freight driver? Uh, Northampton. I don't sign Northampton, but on my passing out trips, when I passed out as a freight driver, I took a train from Dagenham to Northampton, a car train. That's the furthest north I have driven. Right, who have we got? Pure Lemon, you're the third one on my screen with number 14. Let's play Locomotive Livery Location. Let's give you number 14. What are you thinking, guys? <laughs> that boy L, so answer to your title, can you? Yeah, good point. So, yeah, I, I think the simulators can certainly give you, in terms of route learning, I think the simulators can certainly give you a really good understanding of the route and um, the geography so sort of uh, learning station names learning junctions learning the order of speed limits um, and sort of getting a rough idea on on the sort of curvature and the actual route itself so I think I think there is a lot of merit in using the simulator to to learn a route I think the danger is though you need to be aware of the inaccuracies between the uh, the real route and the simulator so if I mean, the simulator is obviously not completely accurate. If I'm expecting a speed to be there, uh, if I, you know, if there's a speed in the simulator and then I'm expecting it to be there in real life, obviously you can see the danger there. So I, I think, I think you need to be aware that the simulator isn't real life and things are not going to be exactly the same. But for learning things like, um, you know, your station names, junction names, tunnels, level crossings, stuff like that. I think definitely is really, really beneficial and it can certainly can help you. So, two yellows. Uh, we've got a 25 coming up in just a minute. So, let's get some brakes in. Millcastle Racecourse, Class 91, DVT at London King's Cross. So we're going to be 25 at the next signal, which is going to have one yellow and is going to have a theatre box, which will give us our platform at Eastbourne. Pressing the wrong button there. So going into platform two. And there is our 25. Life of John. I'm from Colchester City and qualified crossing keeper at the railway museum that I work at. Fantastic, John. I didn't know there was any railway museums in the Colchester area. I may have to go visit. 
Alfie, what is your favourite commercial train and why? That's um, that's a really good question, Alfie. I don't really have a favourite unit as such. I guess I'm quite fond of the Electra Stars, um, having to spend a lot of time riding around on them. I don't mind a Pendolino or a Voyager. I know that's controversial. I didn't. I even like the Pacers. I know that's definitely controversial. I know there's a lot of people. A lot of people that uh, won't agree with that. So going into a terminal station, guys, 15 miles an hour at the platform ramp is roughly where you want to be at. And the TPWS loops, which will be located approximately around about 200 yards from the buffer stops, are set for 10 miles an hour. So you want to make sure you're doing about 9 going over them. Worth noting as well that if you're driving a freight engine, your TPWS trigger speeds are 20% lower than that of a passenger locomotive. And we always aim to stop roughly six foot away from any other vehicles or the buffer stops. We say six foot, but no one's ever going to get a tape measure out and come and check. It can be quite deceiving when you're in the cab as well to judge the distance because um, because of the height of the windscreen in the cab, it can be quite difficult to sort of know exactly how far away you are. So, buffer stop to class as a red signal, so we're going to go step free, DRA, into neutral. We're going to get up out the seat, offside door release. There we go. Lights off. Uh, should be in the auto position anyway. Key off. There we go. That one was a bit close behind us. <laughs> and that'll be the 1407. We are late! Let's close the cab door. That's not a bad run. Staying within the speed limits most of the way. Not too bad. Little bit of speeding in places, but... Do you know what? I'll take that. <laughs> oh, look at that. Look at that stop accuracy at Eastbourne. 0 0.064 yards. Other than Falmer, everything within five yards. Not bad. I'll, as, as a freight driver who doesn't stop at stations, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take that and I'm going to run with it. Um, so, continue journey. Six golf, two... Uh, let's return to free roam. So, yeah, you can see there, guys, that's much bigger than six foot. Um... But when we're sitting in the cab of the train, if we jump back in, doesn't want to let me sit down. What's going on? Ah, oh, he won't let me sit down. But yeah, when you're sitting in the in the um, cab of the train, it looks like you're much much closer. So we're going to do a service back to Brighton, and then depending on how we're feeling, we may do a three one three to Seaford. Fourteen oh eight to Brighton. On time. Right, okay, move. I'm taking this train. This is now my train. Um, is it due an attachment or something? That's interesting. Oh, okay, so the cab was kind of just all set backwards. Ah, so it looks like the train on platform two is going out first, which is the one we've just brought in. And we're going to take this one here, back to Brighton. Okay, so let's start by getting the safety systems in. Key in. So we're going to set our DRA. One time you should set the DRA. When entering or leaving a cab, you should set the DRA. Uh, check our lights are set. Day running. The 377 on here hasn't been updated. The one on the um, Brighton Main Line has been updated. So the cabs look much better. But these lights, in reality, are not red. They're like yellow. So that, that's a bit strange. That um, Yeah, it's a shame that hasn't been updated. Also, this shows us at the wrong end of the train. I've pointed this out before. Um... We are not there, we are here. 
So it should be door H that's open there, and the white dot should be there showing what direction we're, we're supposed to be travelling in. So destination Brighton, that is all set as it should be. In real life on these units, you press on route, um, you pump a number into it, press enter, and that's your route code for the run. And that will fire off, it all works on GPS, that will then fire off as you go through the, uh, the stations and whatnot. Okay, so let's shut my door. So it's telling me to lock doors. You should never close your doors on a red signal. Um, but I know train scene won't clear that signal until we've done so. And we're going to check where we're stopping. So we're Hamden Park, Polgate. Polgate, Glind, Lewis, Falmer. So we're stopping at Glind and not Berwick going in this direction. So there's stop at location Hamden Park. And I'm still on a red signal. So is this where the game is going to go? Nope, I'm not playing ball. Let's be very naughty and try drawing up to the red... Oh, it's changed to one yellow. Perfect. So when we leave somewhere on one yellow, they recommend you don't use more than power notch two. The reason you don't do that is because it's very easy to forget that you've had one yellow. You come hammering around the corner and your next signal is red. Uh, so if you've departed a station on one yellow, you only take power notch two, so 50% power. Uh, we've got a green as it goes, but we are 25 all the way out of Eastbourne. Toby Hancock, is there a specific time when you would switch from day running to night running, or is it just up to the driver? Yeah, completely up to the driver, Toby. No set time for that at all. Hey, Richard the train spotter and more. Welcome to the stream, bud. Long time no speak. Yeah, that makes perfect sense, Lemon, because obviously we're following that other train. Um, I just don't like the way Train Sim tells uh, Green. I just don't like the way Train Sim tells you to close the doors on a red signal. Um, it's something you wouldn't actually do as a conductor or a train dispatcher. If I tried to dispatch a train um, when the signal was still red, that would actually be classed as an operational incident. Uh, if you're a conductor and you shut the doors on a red signal, again, that's classed as an operational incident. Two yellows, red is before Hamden Park. So we don't like chasing red signals, so we're going to shut off and let that coast. Train drivers are lazy people, we don't want to chase red signals. If you're constantly chasing red signals, you're increasing your risk of going past the red and having a spad. So what we want to do is just hang back a little bit, let the train in front get out of the way. Um, that one will be turning right at Willingdon Junction. See, there's no point racing up to red signals, you're not going to get there any quicker. We just like to hang back. Richard, the train spotter, and more. Deborah, are still going to meet up this year, bud. Yeah, still hoping to. Um, incidentally, ladies and gentlemen, I was hoping to do a meet up at the National Railway Museum, Red Ahead, uh, on the 13th of August. Unfortunately, Aslev have announced strike action on that day. So I'm still kind of deciding what to do, but I think that's going to be postponed until sometime next year. Um, there's a lot of people are going to have difficulty getting there. But do check the Discord server um, for information on that. And I will keep everybody updated as to what's going to happen. So, red right ahead. We don't want to be going over the AWS magnet any more than 20 miles an hour. If you're driving a freight train, you don't go over it any more than 10 miles an hour. And that is something the ma a manager will look for when they do a random download of the train or the locomotive. So we're constantly su we're subjected to random downloads as drivers uh, as part of your ongoing assessment process. Certain things they will look at on those downloads um, and speed at the AWS magnet approaching a red signal is one of them. So we're stopping at Hampden Park. The risk here is we've got a red signal at the end of the platform. So like I've said before guys, if we're coming in on a red, I'm not worried about the station, I'm worried about the signal. Signal takes priority over the station. So if we didn't have a red, we'd be coming into the station a lot faster. But because we got a red, we want to make sure we're 20 at the AWS magnet. My priority is stopping before that red signal. Just come up to green, that's lovely. So we are forecast for the four car mark.
Yeah, pure lemon, random downloads, random drug test. Yeah, it's all, <laughs> it's all part of the job, goes with the territory. I think the random drug test is, uh, is quite a good thing, though. They do, surprisingly, in this day and age, they do catch a few people out with excessive alcohol in their system or people that have been smoking stuff they shouldn't have been smoking. Um, all right, four car train, four car mark platform. So it's quite surprising that they do still they do catch a few people out. So yeah, there, there is uh, merit in doing them. Omega, yeah, chasing yellows is foolhardy and against defensive driving techniques from uh, a spad video on YouTube, definitely. <laughs> Richard, if we go to Weatherspoons, I'll get you a bite to eat this time. Yeah, no worries, but we'll we'd definitely have to do that. I want to get the drone up um, over the bridge at Manning Tree there. We got some drone footage last time, didn't we, bub? But I'd really like to go and get some more. That was that was a good day out, that. Freezing cold, if I remember rightly. Right, we've got a green signal. We're off to Polgate, so we're 80. Uh, we're 70 at the moment. We'll be 80 once we clear Willingdon Junction. Then we'll be dropping down to 35 just before Polgate. Dan Stiggers, how do they download? How do they do a download? Always wondered. So Dan, behind that panel there, there's a little um, like com port, and they plug the laptop into it and download the black box. Some locos and trains they can do it remotely, so they just dial into the loco and download it remotely uh, when I was with Southeastern when I was with a blue train company passenger train thingy um, they had to still plug them in to download them so Willingdon Junction I would really 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 like to see uh, probably because it's one of my local routes I would really like to see Train Sim World expand, expand the East Coast way um, over to Hastings and then over to Ashford. I think Ashford would be a really interesting bit. Single line, passing loops, uh, and then you'd have the 171s on there as well. So I, I think that would be a really, really good route to do. Expand the East Coast way. Right, there's the warning for the 35. I'm gonna get break step one in. Yeah, it might need a little bit of two to get it in for that 35. Yeah, definitely, Joe. Through to all would be great. Um, I think they'd be missing a trick, though. I think they should go all the way through to Ashford. I think the single line section um, towards Ryan and then across the marshes would be really good. And like I say, it would give them reason to create the 171 as well. Uh, it would be really nice to see the 171 in this. You could then layer that onto the Brighton main line. You could have empty runs on the 171 um, up to Celeste Depot. So I, I think that would be a really, really good addition. But I, I, I think also that... We're a little bit spoilt down in the south with what we've got out for Train Sim World. So it might it might be quite nice to get some sort of Midlands routes, some northern routes and stuff like that going on as well. So back up to 90, our next speed will be the 80 across Cookmere River Bridge before Berwick. But we are of course stopping at Polgate. We are running on green signals. Tamworth the official, hello guys, welcome to the stream. Alpha's Transport Productions, opinions on Southern 455s. Absolutely scandalous, and they have gone way too soon. <laughs> what more can I say? Good, reliable units. Um, needed, because let's face it, Southern don't have the Electrostar capacity. Um, purely a decision from what I understand by the DFT. Mr. Grant Chaps, make of him what you will. Um, I won't get political on streams. <laughs> But yeah, I, th I think it was a decision by the DFT. It wasn't a decision by the train operating companies. That's the thing in this country. We have, you know, we're supposed to be a um, privatised rail operator. But it's privatised companies that are completely and utterly regulated by the government. So government says this, you have to do it. Right, we're a four-car train, four-car mark. Bang on the mark as well. Into neutral. Doors on the left. 
Anthony Robertson, currently sitting on a train on a T3 waiting to go into Penge Tunnel. Hopefully I don't get called in before you finish. Cheers for keeping us entertained. No worries, Anthony. You're very welcome. Uh, funnily enough, my manager was working on that very block yesterday. They're also putting, Anthony, I'm assuming you're on a 66, they're also putting differential speeds on that route as well when it's re-signalled, um, which is going to be a little bit annoying. Lock doors. I feel like we should jump in train sim classic now and do some do some uh, chat and mainline stuff. <laughs> right, we're off to Glind. Let's go. Clark Lawless, hey Debra, is the driver psychometry test hard, or could you do a brief overview or a video on it? Uh, the trouble is, train uh, train scotter with the psychometric test. It's different depending on what company you work for. So to make a, a factually correct video is, is quite difficult. Not that I've ever let facts get in the way before, as you know, but no, trying to make something that's accurate is, is quite difficult. There are some sort of general hints I've got for the psychometric testing, um, but it does depend on exactly what test you're going to take. Most companies will do the group board and dots test. If you happen to do the dots test, my advice for that would be go online, download the group board and tool. If you've not seen the dots test, basically you get a big sheet with lots and lots of dots in it. They look like um, they look like numbers on a dice. That's the best way I can describe them. You've got all different shapes and different dots. And what you have to do is you have to go through the page and you have to um, circle or cross off groups of four dots. And groups of four can be in any different shape. So you might get four in a row, four in a square, four in like an L shape. If you download the group board and tool and you go through the sheets, what will happen is eventually you'll get to know what all the patterns of four look like. So just in the way you can roll it, you can roll a dice and you can look at the dice and without counting the dots you know exactly what number's on there because you know what pattern you're looking for. The same thing will happen with the, um, the group board and dots test as well. You'll be able to look at it and you'll know exactly what patterns you're looking for, which then makes it much, much easier. Cheating? Maybe. It's not cheating, it's, it's just using your initiative, I guess, um, which is what these things are all about. <laughs> British Ace, I think Dovetail Games should prioritise completely making the South East. I, yeah, I, I kind of agree with you, but I don't think many people in the stream would. Incidentally, Joe, I had a run down the Aran Valley yesterday. I cab cabbed a train down the Aran Valley. Um, it's quite a nice scenic run down there. It's the first time I've been down there. Never been down as a passenger even. So yeah, that was that was interesting. You were you say you're joking, Joe? You weren't joking, really. You mean it? You absolutely mean it. <laughs> Laser jet. Yeah, let's have a game of LLL. LLLLL. Post your numbers now for locomotive livery location. Alfie, can you do a video about signage on the rails and what they mean? Alfie, absolutely. So I'm currently working through a um, currently working through like a train driver rules series type video thing at the moment. I've done the GSMR ones, and as we go through those videos, and I am going to sort of do a complete series of those. As we go through those, signs are going to be introduced as we go along. So when we do signalling, you're going to get signs related to signalling. Uh, when we do temporary permanent, temporary speed restrictions, you'll get signs relating to that. So it's kind of going to build up to a whole... Um, There's a 75 there. It's, it's kind of going to build up into sort of a whole, um, a whole picture. So yeah. Who have we got? TR9 train spotting. You're in there with number six. Let's play Locomotive Livery Location. Ah, let's give you number six. I think that one sealed the deal. Oh, I think you can all get it now. Yeah, the, the Aran Valley, it really was a nice route. The only, the challenging thing with the Aran Valley, um, I, I kind of went down there, I have got to learn it, um, but it was more sort of route appreciation for me. The the challenging thing with that is there is a lot of uh, AHB crossings 
um, down there. There's not that much in the way of speeds, but there's a lot of crossings and stuff down there. So we are off to Glind, 2.9 miles. Fixed part, it's so clearly a DVT. It's a DVT, not a 91. Louis, hello, welcome to the stream. Welcome to the speeding stream. Omega, here's one for you. Going for a station that you're not stopping at. Is it mandatory to sound your horn or up to the driver? Uh, if there's a whistle board, then it'll be mandatory to sound your horn. Otherwise, it is entirely up to the, uh, the driver's discretion. If you go through every station you're not stopping at sounding your horn, you're probably going to start to upset the locals a little bit. If I'm coming towards a station and there's someone stood on the edge of the platform, I'm absolutely going to sound my horn and give them a blast. Um, if there's a train spotter on the platform or a railway enthusiast going like that, I'm probably going to blow my horn, unless it's a location where we've been specifically told not to. So we've got the 80 coming up just before Glime. We're going to get a little bit of braking just to get down for that. One of the things uh, worth remembering when you learn routes, guys, is the speed limits are not always the same in both directions. So you, you need to learn the route both ways. And there is our distance signal for Glime. So between the distance signal and the stop signal will always be what they call service braking distance. So distance signals are normally a good place to start getting the brake in. Was an incident at Barnes Green Crossing not so long ago. Ignorance from the car driver to blame. Yeah, I remember the, the driver yesterday who I was with, and I can't remember his name, um, told me the way you remember the AHB crossings on the Aran Valley is remember the composer Bach, or Bach, B-A-C-H. So it's Barnes Green, something else, something else, something else. <laughs> Let's get some brakes in, guys. I don't want tea and biscuits. Come on, we're going to go a whole stream without tea and biscuits. Yorkshire Level Crossing Channel. Hello, welcome to the stream. Great to have you here. No tea and biscuits for me, not yet. Four on the four. I'll try and get that in the drop light, that's where we want to be. Sorry, that's not the drop light, is it? The drop light's on the door. That little window there, that's where we want to be. Into neutral, so we're a four car train, we're on the four car mark and the platform is on the left. Matthew Rice, Richard, what would a train driver do if the PIS wasn't working as it should, e.g. not lighting up? Um, Matthew, absolutely nothing. You would just make manual announcements. Um, the PIS not working would not be a good enough reason to take a train out of service. So you just pick up that lovely handset there and make um, make lovely announcements back to, the, uh, back to the passengers. I used to like doing announcements to the passengers. Try and sort of keep keep it jolly, have a bit of personality to it. I don't I don't like it when the conductors make those robotic announcements, which are clearly off of a script. You know, when it's like this is the train to this is the train to Brighton. We're going to be calling at Lewis. Please keep all your personal belongings with you. See it, say it, sorted. Blah 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 blah. It's much nicer if you have a bit of charisma. Sit back, relax, put your feet up, enjoy a glass of wine, and we'll be at our destination very soon. I've made a couple a couple of announcements on that. Leaving London Bridge on a fast train down to... We used to have uh, London Bridge to Highbrooms, fast trains in commuter times. And you come out of London Bridge. Ladies and gentlemen, I can see green signals ahead of us. Nothing's going to stop us now. We're going to have a nice speedy run home for you tonight. Sit back, relax, put your feet up. And we'll get you home safely as quickly as possible. Just a bit more human. Just to get a bit of a rapport going with the passengers. You can try doing that with freight, but it's not the same. <laughs> Yorkshire level crossing, so yeah, in my um, in my job, do you only drive? Yeah, so I sign class 66s, class 69s, class 73s, and class 73 nines. Um, that's currently on my, my route card.
British Ace, Billinghurst, Barnes Green, Rusper Road, Eiffel, Crawley Road, and Crawley West. No, the, the ones I was talking about, Joe, were just the AHB crossings. He told me uh, bark just for the AHBs. Alfie Galley, do you have to press both door open buttons? Yeah, that's a really good question, Alfie. So, the bottom two there, door release or release, you'll need to press those together. However, if you are at what they call an SDO station, so that's where the station has selective door opening. So say you're on an eight car train and the platform can only accommodate four, you will need to press the door release button and the SDO release button. If you press the door release button and the all release button, all that will happen is they'll flash at you and make you press those two before the doors will open. The doors open button on the top left there will physically open all of the doors. So what you'll need to do, you can press door release or release and then you can press the door open and all the doors will physically open rather than just unlock. So 70 coming up, Southern Junction, so we're going 70, 60, 40 and 10 into Lewis. So getting loud for that 60 nice and early there. Volvo B to them. Do you ever sing the tune of London Bridge is Falling Down but with the lyrics London Bridge is our next stop, next stop, next stop. <laughs> London Bridge is our next... No, I'm not going to sing. Can't sing, won't sing. <laughs> let's, get, let's get down for that 40. Oh, Kenneth, love it. Kenneth and Uneaton, when I worked in airlines, we used to call passengers self-loading freight. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. <laughs> yeah, I like that one. That's good, that. Yeah, Omega, that's the one. The ambassador would like to apologise that the Ferrero Rocio has run out this evening. One yellow. So this signal has now changed. There's no position 4 on this signal. Position 4 route indicator would take you up to um, towards Cooksbridge, Plumpton, Withersfield, up towards London, Haywards Heath. Um, that position is now gone on that signal, so all you get is a green. So we have position 1 route indicator, which is going to take us into platform... Oh, I was getting the wrong way around here. 4. And we're going to be 10 into the platform. Red ahead. A transport from train spot from Berkshire. Please go into the Discord server live stream. Yeah, we'll stop the stop the train at the station and we'll have a little look in the Discord server. So there's a two car stop and we are a four car train there is our four car stop marker just about there a little bit short of it but not too bad ok so we're going to go step three not emergency we're going to set our DRA and we're going to go into neutral which is the procedure for being stopped at a red signal we're a four car train we're on the four car mark and the platform is on the left. And we are at Lewis. Let's have a quick look in the Discord server then and see what you lovely people have been posting. If you want to post in there you can do. There is a link in the description below and we are in the live stream pictures page. We've got some 387s and some lovely London Transport Class 20s there. Beautiful. Oh, it's refreshing. We've got, we've got 50s. We've got 73s. Uh, that bottom one, 73, looks like Basingstoke. Uh, if I'm not very much mistaken. I probably am very much mistaken, but it looks like Basingstoke to me. And we've got the Royal Wessex. I'm no good on steam engines. That looks like Swanage. The bottom right there. Freightliner 66s, 455s. 
we're all in there today. Don't forget, guys, we're in the, like I say, we're in the live stream pictures page. Uh, if you want to post anything in there, you're more than welcome to do. And there is a link to the Discord server in the description below. Right, you're telling me to lock doors even though I'm on a red. Which is bad, 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 bad. Stop at location, Falmer. I can't do that, I have a red signal. Denied. Wait for signal to change. Let's have a quick look on the map and see what's coming in. Yeah, we've got a train coming in, so a little free car. It's probably a 313. So I just imagine the route is set. Imagine he's going to come across there, then into, into the bay platform. So we'll sit tight and wait for a few minutes and hope that the game doesn't crash because he has a habit of doing that on me. Amy, turn off the assist for extra realism. Where are we going? Falmer. Uh, Falmer, then Brighton. Do you know what? We'll be brave. We'll do it hudless. I'm only route learning this bit at the moment, guys. I've only had a couple of trips over it. Um, saying that, I, I'm hoping to get it signed off tomorrow. So I've just got... It's just a couple of the speeds I'm unsure about, and I just need to learn the level crossing names. So hopefully I can... Uh, I can get all that nailed out tomorrow with maybe a few video runs as well. Because we can use, as well as going out and learning the route in the actual engine, you can use um, videos to aid with route learning. You've got route maps and other information packs you can use. So, um, yeah, we'll kind of tie all that together. Richard, Dovetail updated the game, so signals will change even if your doors are open. Oh, that's good to know, Matthew. I didn't know that. Okay, excellent. Matthew Rice, do drivers whistle sound the horn when they come into Lewis? Uh, there's no whistleboard, Matthew, so... Um, yeah, there's no whistleboard, Matthew, so there's no requirement to do so. Kentish train, guys. Sheerness is a questionable place. It's not quite as questionable as the Isle of Grain, I would argue. <laughs> right. We've got a green. We're 10 out of Lewis. Going uphill. Let's see if we can make this work. Oh, what are you talking about, Joe? Crawley is a lovely place. So I've got 85 of you people still here tonight. That is absolutely fantastic. And I would very much appreciate it if you would hit that like button and consider subscribing. Three one three is beautiful. Give them another ten. Yeah, I. Am I right in saying that the three one three is going in December? Uh, which is going to be a bit of a shame, if I'm being completely honest with you. So we're fifty five. I'm just going to put that on to verify that. Come on, we've cleared the ten, <laughs> and we're off to Falmer. Yeah, I, I did cab. I cabbed a couple of free one frees yesterday. I cabbed one from um, Barnum um, back to Brighton, which was lovely, and then I cabbed a couple on down to Lewis and back. I didn't. I was hoping to get two A one. I saw two A one come through Barnum. I think it was going to Portsmouth or Bognor or somewhere, um, but I didn't get to cab that one unfortunately. But from what I've heard, two A one's going into preservation, uh, which would be nice. So this is Kingston Tunnel. I am speeding. I think I'm speeding, aren't I? Yeah, it's 50. It goes up to 70 once we get up to the um, A27 bridge. Bep, is it possible to get a whistle instruction manual, especially for Spirit of Steam? I'm not sure, to be honest with you. So there we are, 45 over 70. Climbing uphill all the way to the, um, the gradient changes at the substation. 
then we so sort of start dropping down a little bit as we go into the tunnel. And once we get halfway through the tunnel, it's like falling off the edge of a cliff. Um, and the gradient just runs away with us massively. Southeast Rail Productions. 313s won't go until the 3775s are released by Southeastern. And I should imagine Southeastern can't release the 3775s until they've got the rest of the 707s from Southwestern. It's, uh, it's musical chairs with rolling stock at the moment. I really like seeing the 313s um, running about. It's really nice. We used to, uh, There used to be a 313 service that used to run um, Brighton to Orr. I think it went all the way from Brighton to Orr. certainly went to Orr. Um, that, was, that was always really nice to see at Hastings. Quite a rare move. Once a day you used to get a 313 come through. Yeah, Joe, that's um, the gradient really catches you out, fam. Especially Morse Coombe as well as the other one, it really catches you out. Yeah, that's a good one, Alfie. Some trains have a whistle and a horn. Which, <laughs> when the whistle board is seen, which one do you use, the whistle or the horn? So at a whistle board, you use the horn, funnily enough. So whistle boards are low tone only. That's the high tone. That's your low tone. So low tone only between the hours of 6 in the morning and midnight. Most drivers, a lot of drivers will sound two tones, but strictly speaking it should be low tone only. Um, the whistle is typically used for when you're inside depots and sidings. Quite a good one on this. Some of them sound a little bit asthmatic. It's not a bad one on here. So we're just reaching the top of the hill now. Thirty-five seventies. We come through Falmer Tunnel. I'm going to get the brakes in before we come into the tunnel. We start dropping down here, and then just as we come out the tunnel, the gradient changes again and gets even steeper. Cody, I like the new Isle of Wight trains. Yeah, they are really good. Uh, well, the the simulation of them is really good. I think Rivet done a really good job with those. Yes, you've really got to watch that gradient because it can really push you here. So we are found where we are four for the four. And the doors will be on the left. Yes, you break step one there, it's hardly doing anything. It's just, we are coming down a little bit, but yeah... But just because the gradient is really steep. Very busy station on match days. Four on the four. Into neutral. The doors on the left. Right, I'm trying to keep up with the chat, guys, but there's a lot of you... <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of you in today. One down in his boat, so when should you use two-tone? Uh, two-tone is to be sounded as a warning. So if you see people on or about the track, that would be two-tone. If you're approaching a foot crossing and someone's about to walk out on you, that would be a two-tone. Um, if you're coming towards, if you're coming into a platform and there's people standing on the edge of it, that would be a two-tone. So whistleboard's one-tone only. Um, a warning is two-tone. So there, there is a caveat in the rule book that says the driver may sound the horn whenever they deem it necessary, which is, which is quite a nice caveat. Um, and that would be a warning horn, so two tones. Right, we are off. We're going to give it power notch two because we're on a steep downhill gradient. We are 60 miles an hour at the moment. Thirteen Bath. Hello, Richard. What age do you have to be in order to be a depot driver? Uh, on the main line, depot driver or main line driver, you need to be twenty-one. I believe, and I'm sure someone in the chat will be able to verify this. I believe with London Underground, you can drive at eighteen. Uh, 
Uh, if a trap worker... Um, when you're alerting someone of trap workers, if a trap worker doesn't... Yep, sorry. <laughs> Just going through the chat here. Riley! Is it true that a prolonged blast on the warning horn is a train in distress? Yep. Long blast on the high tone is a distress. So if I'm doing that... That's train in distress. If you're doing... Incidentally, if you're doing um, a wrong direction move, what's known as a wrong direction move, so say we'd overshot... Uh, Morse Coombe Station and we'll be given permission to change ends and set back. Um, during the setback move, you give a series of short blasts on the high tone. So probably not quite that frequently, but I'd be required to do that throughout. So we're not stopping at Morse Coombe. I'm just going to double check that. You can't get the timetable up unless you've got the HUD up, which is really annoying. No, straight into Brighton. So I believe this is a, um, yeah, 40. I thought it was going to say 35 for freight, but 40. The horn sound on here is pretty good, actually. I'm quite impressed with that. Right, 55 coming up. Matthew, Richard with a class 4659, did you ever use regen braking? I believe when I, I only drove them as a shunter driver, so a depot driver. Um, but we used to get up to 30 miles an hour because we were allowed to take them from the depot to the station. Uh, and I believe, yeah, regen was enabled on them when I drove them. So our next speed limit is going to be at the Brighton end of London Road, which is going to be the 30 mile an hour as we go across the viaduct. little way to go yet. Yeah, we've got to go through the station before we reach that. Davidoff, Dabro, aka Richard, when are you doing another LLL with my new photo? Uh, I will have a look, Davidoff, and um, check what photos of yours that I've got left to do. There's your 30. We'll be 25 as we come off the viaduct into Brighton. Lovely bit of route in real life this is as well. Oh, there's a cat behind me meowing. So I think most of you have got this now, but let's have another go, shall we? Post your numbers now for locomotive livery location. So we're going into platform six. Uh, class 66 locomotives are not permitted into platform eight at Brighton. Um, due to weight restrictions. There's our 20. I think I said it was 25 in. It's 25 out, 20 in. Davidoff, Mumrail is uh, very well, thank you. She's at work tonight. She's in the hospital. She was saying... Um, during all the hot weather we had, she was working in the hospital and she was on a ward where they had COVID. So she had to wear full PPE and a mask. They have all the windows closed. They have no aircon on because they're not allowed. So there's no fans going uh, in those sort of late 30s, early 40 degree heat. And she's just saying it really wasn't very comfortable, which I can imagine. So 15 at the platform ramps. 10 for the TPWS. And we have got Mr. Quicko Gaming. You are the third one on my screen with number 13. Let's play Locomotive Livery Location. Let's give you 13. I think we've probably got one more round in that before we do a reveal. Yep. 
Ladies and gentlemen, we are now approaching Brighton. Please remember to take all your personal belongings with you. On behalf of myself and the train crew, I would like to thank you for choosing to travel with Southern. It's a lovely sunny day. Head down to the seafront, get yourself some chips. I'd recommend a ride on the pier as well. My DSD wasn't cancelling then, it put me off my announcement. <laughs> Thank you for travelling. Please have your tickets ready for the automatic ticket gates. Have a fantastic day here in Brighton, and I'll see you on the way home. Nice personal announcements. Right, set the DRA as well. Come on, let's do it properly. And we're going to do lights off. Key. Beautiful. So guys, what are we thinking? Do you want to do a run on the 313 down to Seaford? Shall we do a 313 to Seaford or shall we call it a night? It is entirely up to you guys. I am at your mercy. Let me know what you want to do. That's an even better run. Little bit. Oh, it's quite a lot of speeding there. Stop accuracy. Oh, look, the worst one's 3.8 yards. I'll take that any day of the week. That's not bad. That's not... Riley, on behalf of the train crew, apologise for the random noises coming from the cab. Yeah, brilliant. Lots of love for the 313. I've, uh... I have got to do a Roblox stream afterwards as well. That's, that's kind of a, just a playing around with Roblox. It's not a proper stream in the Discord. We'll do a 313. If you want, if you want a free one, free, hit the like button and subscribe. Don't forget to do that. Um, oh, I've pressed the wrong button now, haven't I? While that's loading, let's have a quick look in the Discord server and see what's been posted over there. Harry Beck, sixty-six. Is that one Harry Beck? I want to say that one's Harry Beck. Is it seven two one? Someone, someone will correct me. Don't forget, guys, if you want to um, post your pictures in the Discord server, you can do. We're in the live stream pictures page, and there is a link in the description below in order to do that. Okay, right, what should we have? Uh, Brighton to Seaford, Brighton to Lewis... I tell you what we'll do. We'll do a we'll do a Lewis to Seaford. We won't do the Brighton bit. We'll do a we'll do a Lewis to Seaford. Um, is there a Lewis to Seaford? No, there's no Lewis to Seaford. Okay, so that's that's not going to work, is it? Oh, we'll just do a Brighton. We'll do a Brighton to Seaford then. Uh, Six forty in the morning. No, let's do let's do a daytime run. Seven fifty-two. Eight ten. Brighton to Seaford. Thirty-five minutes. We'll do that one. We'll do that one, guys, and then we will call it a night. And I'm going to go and play some Roblox. Thoroughly looking forward to that, actually. Never thought I would say that. Okay. So I was on one of these yesterday. I had the pleasure of cabbing a few of these. So, uh... I've never signed these in real life. Oh, look, we've got GSMR GB on the radio on this one. Oh, we can actually turn the radio on and off. That's different. I've played on this train quite a lot and I never realised we could do that. We can't register, though, which is a little bit annoying. I think just having a functional GSMR would be would be really good on this. Right, so we've got the signal. That is in the off position. Um, where's my AWS safety systems on these? Uh, da, 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 da. AWS on. Yeah, so when I was out route learning yesterday, I had the joy of sitting on this little jump seat here, um, looking out the window. So they're not the most comfortable things to route learn on. 
It's got to be said. Uh, ben, when are you? Uh, what are you going to play on Roblox? I'm going to have a go at SCR, Ben. Um, that will not be on YouTube. That will be over in the Discord server. The link in the description. So if you want to, um, if you want to watch me make a complete and utter hash of Roblox, then uh, do head over there. That would be wicked. I'm going to make a complete and utter hash of driving a free one free first. I'm guessing this is all stations. London Run, Morskine, Falmar, Lewis, Southies, New Haven Town, New Haven Harbour, Bishopstone, Seaford. Indeed. So nice cam driven, cam driven engines, really nice. I won't turn the HUD off for this one either because I don't know where the stations are. <laughs> 25 going out. We've got an E. Beautiful. I didn't do the lights, did I? Let's put some um, headlights on. Yeah, we'll miss these old girls when we're gone. Andy, spray my back driving one of these ones. Desperately uncomfortable. Yeah, I, I can't speak from a driver's perspective, Andy, but certainly from a, the second man's side, they're, they're not particularly comfortable. So we're off to London Road. We're only a little free car. Proper traction though, cam driven traction. We can hand notch it up and down, it's lovely. Matthew, what route am I learning? Currently learning um, Brighton to Eastbourne. Um, however, there are little bits of it that I signed. So I signed from Lewis to Southern Junction um, and I signed from Willingdon Junction to Eastbourne. So just kind of filling in the gaps a little bit. Yeah, brakes are not so sharp on this. I need to remember that. <laughs> Stop accuracy may not be as good. So we are all stopped. We are free cars on the free car mark. And doors are on the left. Matthew Rice, why are there sometimes horn controls on the second man's side? Uh, the reason is, Matthew, that if someone is sitting on the second man's side, if you're going around like a right-hand bend, um, or a left-hand bend even, if you're going around a bend, it's possible that the person on the second man's side is going to be able to see people on the track, uh, like workers in orange, before the driver. Um, so the reason that that's there is so that people, on the, if they need to use it, they can do it, people on the second man's side. Now oh, we're running early. Look at that. Why were you root laying on a 313 if you drive for GBRF, asked Kieran. Um, because, Kieran, one of the ways we route learn is we get cab passes and we go out on uh, any train that's going over the route, so normally passenger trains, yeah, in order to learn the route. So GBR, if I was going to learn the route, GBRF would have to get a, um, a locomotive out. They'd have to have someone that signs the route to drive it. You'd have to get a pathway. Um, obviously, that wastes energy. So what we do is we get cab passes um, and then we go out with uh, a driver on a passenger train in the cab and then learn the route like that. So we're off to Morsecombe. Pure Lemon, welcome back. So I think the trick with this is, is before you go into um, four, which is weak field, make sure you've got your speed up in three. Because if you go straight into four, you'll inevitably get a lot of wheel slip. Uh, I don't know how stereotypical that is, or prototypical that is, um, of the train. But yeah, I find if you, you notch it up gently and slowly, allow it to come up, then you don't get so much wheel slip. Ben P, thanks for joining us, bud. See you later. Anthony Roberts never signed free one freeze for my past driver days. Closest I got was the four five fives. 
We're speeding. Oh, we can do a two-tone. <laughs> I'm not going to do this run without tea and biscuits. My braking is atrocious. We are going uphill, though. That That is to my advantage. I think the brakes on these are, are really bad in real life, though. Certainly compared to the 377s, they're, they're not good. Camera in the trees. We'll take that. <laughs> right, we're a free on the free car mark. Winter neutral platforms on the left. Open the doors. Post your numbers now for locomotive livery location. Yeah, I think we've got one more round in that guy, so get your numbers in now. Yeah, one down in his boat. AWS is indeed on. Dabrow, you're going to have a lot of tea and biscuits on SCR. <laughs> Uh, Jack's HST Productions, is it unusual for two tracks that are running next to each other to have different line speeds, i.e. the line between Glind and Eastbourne, totally different speeds other than the 35 at Polgate? Yeah, Jack, that is that is reasonably common, actually. There's a number of places where the up and down line have got different speeds. There's even places where you've got like an up fast and an up slow that run parallel to each other, and the, the slow and the fast will have different speeds. Uh, sometimes the fast lines have got slower speeds than the slow line, which is a bit strange. Um... The one place that comes to mind for us as freight drivers is between Norwood Junction and London Bridge. So if we're going up Norwood Junction via Forest Hill, if we're on the um, up fast, we're only permitted to do 35 miles an hour. However, if we're on the up slow, we're allowed to do 60 miles an hour. So yeah, no, it's, it's quite normal to have parallel lines um, that have different speeds. Too early into four. She's slipping. It's about 30 seems to be a good speed to take her into Weakfield. Okay, who have we got? Amy, Alfie, David, Scott, number four. You are the third one on my list. Let's play. Let's play. Locomotive livery location. Oh, I think this is going to be the last one on this, guys. I'll let you all have your final say and then we'll do a reveal. I, I think most people have worked out what that is now. David Scott, I really want to be a train driver, but want to do freight. How do I go by that? So, David, um, with freight, if you want to go into freight, my advice would be Go on the freight company's website, find out what your lo where your local freight depot is. Um, go onto their website. Some freight companies will employ train drivers directly from uh, the street, but a lot of train a lot of freight companies will want um, people to come into the company as a shunter. So you'd start as a shunter or assistant train manager, rail operator, different titles in different companies. Um, and once you've done that role for maybe a year or two, you can then apply apply internally to become a um, a driver. Alternatively, you can get a job as a passenger driver. You can do a couple of years as a passenger driver and then progress on to um, freight driving. So yeah, some companies will take will take drivers straight off the streets and train them in the world of freight. Um, but most companies in the world of freight will only uh, take qualified drivers or will only train people from within their own staff. Flying with gas, L N E R two two five. Yeah, ah, oh, see, I always knew it as a two two five. Coming into farm, we're way too slow here. I thought I had the AWS turned on. I didn't get any... I got no AWS indication on that. I'm going to have to go back and have a look at that. Okay, so we are free on the free platform on the left. Oh, I did put my handle up. Have I got an MCB that I need to do as well, maybe? Uh... Yes, 
obviously that would tell me it's working. I've got a GKS indicator. Does anyone know what a GKS indicator is? Guard's key switch. Is that guard's key switch indicator? That be the one. David Scott, I heard you have to have a driving license for it. Is that true? Not necessarily, David. No, some companies uh, will want you to have a... Um, I assume you mean a road driving license. Some companies will require you to have a road driving license because as part of your duties, you may have to drive company vans. Um, I.e. with my company, sometimes I'll be travelling. I'll book on at my home depot, which is Tunbridge. And sometimes I might have to travel to another location in order to relieve a train. Um... And to do that, sometimes you take a company van, so you will need to have a driving license. Most passenger companies won't require you to have a, a car driving license, though. So, yeah, it's not, it's not true that you have to have, but normally for freight you will have to have. Yeah, Volvo B10, TPWS and AWS operational. You only get that with the Mark IV TPWS modules. So our next B will be the 55. However, because I am route learning, there is an additional 35 for freight drivers, or differential 35 coming up, just around the corner, by the signal. Going down the hill, we should be doing a running brake test as well before we start going down. Uh, this is known as Falmer Bank. Alfie, why are there two phones on this train? Uh, that one's for your radio and that one is your PA handset. There is the additional 35. Just before the signal, like I said. I am route learning. <laughs> Kenji's train guy. Hey Davra, where is the steering wheel on this train? There's always one. There's always one, isn't there? <laughs> David Scott, thank you, buddy. I'm actually going to apply to Network Rail as I did my line side license also. Are you looking at more, more on the maintenance side there or signalling? Um, what, what takes your fancy? So our next speed will be the 55, which is at, um, as we go across the A27, just after the A27 bridge. Downhill all the way, it's going to give that a little bit of break there. Matthew, Richard, what happens if you see a trespasser when you're at low speed? So, trespassers on the line is going to be down to you to judge it as the driver it's a bit difficult really it depends on what you call if, if I'm driving along and someone runs out in front of me and they go across a level crossing and off the railway infrastructure I'm going to report that to the signaller but I'm not necessarily going to red button it or yellow button it I'm just going to report it as normal unless it's a near miss of course and I've had to make an emergency brake application however if I see someone just hanging about on the side of the track it depends on the circumstances. If I'm able to stop, then possibly I would. But you've got to be careful not to put yourself at risk. Because you don't know if that person who's on the side of the line has got a knife on them or, or anything else. Or they're going to cause you harm. So it's, it's, a little bit, it's a little bit kind of, you need to call it on its merit. Um, if they're sort of, if they're up on the, the bank. So say someone was sort of up on the bank walking around. Um, I'd probably want to yellow button that, so an urgent call. Whereas if someone was sort of in the forefoot of the other track and they were sort of right on the railway rather than sort of just up on the bank, that's definitely going to be a red call because they're a dangerous danger themselves. Emergency call, stop all trains. So you kind of just need to um, need to judge that on its merit really as you go along. Yes, yeah, so it could be a bit of a difficult one to call. If you're if you're unsure, if you're in doubt, press the big red button, get everything stopped. Um, I suppose that's never going to be the wrong thing to do, really. 
if you see a trespasser on the line and you, you decide you're going to press the button and stop all the trains, that's never really going to be the wrong thing to do. Um, yeah, but you, you, you kind of will, you will get to know. So yeah, I was told to go 30 miles an hour past this next signal. We're doing 31, so we're well down for that. Matthew L, do you ever miss mainline commuter driving? Or are you happy to be past that? Uh, I wouldn't say I miss it, Matthew. I quite enjoy what I'm doing now, if I'm being honest with you. I would go back to it in the future. I'd, I'd never disliked it. I always quite enjoyed my job doing that. I just wanted to do something different, which is why I changed. Um, but yeah, it's, it's something I would go back to. I, I wouldn't say I particularly miss it. Um, like I said, I do enjoy what I do now. I miss the free travel and some of the other perks that went with it, though. I, I'll say that one. And there's our 10, which we are going to bust. Only a little bit. Not too bad. As we come into Lewis. Kieran, the furthest north I sign is not very far north at all. Um, Wilsdon, Wilsdon High Level is the furthest north that I sign. Flying with gas, have you been on the 745s yet? Um, jog my memory, which ones are those? Are they the uh, crossrail units? I'm really bad with modern units. I, I do apologise. Pure Lemon, do you drive a 66 regularly? Yeah, 66 is my primary traction, so all the time. So there's our 2 to 4 car stop marker. And we are all stopped. There's our, yep, into neutral. Open the doors. We are free on the free. D -d 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 Paul Morrison, I had my TDM interview three weeks ago, and your videos helped me a lot with prep and then understanding the industry. Hoping I get my job off the scene. Fantastic, Paul. Yeah, do update us. Really pleased you found the, uh, the videos useful. And very good luck to you. Volvo B10, what would you rather drive, 66s or a first gen DMU? Definitely a first gen DMU. Anything heritage, in my opinion, is always going to be better. As long as it hasn't got a boiler on it. A steam boiler on it. Ah <laughs> uh, yeah, the Greater Anglia Flirts. Yeah, I've not been on one. I've seen a lot of them about. They do look like really nice units. Yeah, I've not, not had the pleasure of going on one though. Right, we're leaving on a green. We are... 20, 40, 60, 40 across the junction. Back up to 70. I sign all the way to Seaford, so no excuses, boys and girls. Ian Bradley. Hey there, Debrail. Richard, how are things? Thankfully, travelling with, with you tonight. Can we have an express service? The Cronenberg Express. I need a speedy delivery. <laughs> I've got juice. Well, I had juice. It's all gone. I do have some Stellas in the fridge, though. I might have to crack one of those open in a minute. I'm, yeah, I'm working tomorrow, but not till 9.45am. So, yeah, I'm still good. I can have one. Something we don't, we really don't muck about with, sort of, alcohol and stuff like that. It's not worth your job. But, yeah, I'm, I'm alright for one. Alfie, Galley, why did you become a train driver? Um, I'm, I'm kind of one of those really sad people, Alfie. It was my ambition growing up to become a train driver. It's what I wanted to do ever since I was a kid, and it's something I pursued and something I got into. So, yeah, that's 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 pretty much it. Uh, it was, was an ambition of mine, and here I am. I'm... I, I think I've said before on a few streams, I really... This is inaccurate. That should be one yellow. If you're going to Seaford, that should be one yellow. I think, I think I've said it before in... Um, and it's 40 over the junction, isn't it? I'm sure it's 40 over... Yeah, it's 40 over the junction. It says 40 coming up. Yeah, I think I've said it in a few of the streams. I really do enjoy what I do and I enjoy my job. But I wish I'd kind of... I wish I'd gone into it later in life. 
Um, I wish I'd explored uh, other careers on the railway and sort of sort of found out a bit more about who I was and what I wanted to do before I started train driving. I think that the problem is with um, train driving, the salary, as I said before, is very good. Um, and once you've got used to having that salary every month, it's very difficult to do without it. So if I kind of, I mean, I, I would love to sort of pursue working on the airlines um, as an air hostess or, or ultimately a pilot. But in order to do that, for me to go through the training or something, it would mean taking an absolutely massive pay cut. Um, and obviously I've got a family to support and everything else. So that would be really difficult to do. So I, I wish I'd gone into it later in life if I'm being completely honest with you, but I do really, really enjoy it. Um, it's a good job. It is a good job. So my, my ultimate aim is to go into... I, I'm not 100% sure I want to go into management, but I'd like to go into training. I'm, I'm what they call a mentor driver at the moment, so I have, uh, I have people come out with me, poor sods that get lumbered with me, uh, and I have to teach them how to drive freight trains. Um, but I, yeah, I'd quite like to end up in the training school, it's where, I'd, where I'd ultimately like to be. Hence all the rules videos and stuff. Kentish, drunk rail streams, SCR. <laughs> Nobody's ever seen me drunk. Glime Reach Fire Dart, there's a 40 across this if you're driving freight train. Which we are not. We are stopping at Southies. Has everybody seen... Has everybody seen the Southeast video? If you are 18, if you are over 18, I'm not saying any more about it. If you are over 18, try and find the Southeast video. You may find it on um, some less questionable sites, more questionable sites. If you are under 18, do not go looking for it. Right, let's get some break in because South, uh, Southeast is not so far away. You never know, Andy. Um, I think I'm the only instructor at Tunbridge at the moment. So, <laughs> quite possibly. Um, yeah, drop, drop me a message if you want to know anything else, Andy. Then I'll, I'll be happy to uh, answer any questions you may have about your, your, your upcoming uh, initiation <laughs> into the world of freight. There's a bug on this this train with the brakes. Um, sometimes you go into brake step one and it just gives you way too much brake force. Oh, the brakes. Come on, Southie, stop. If it's on the platform, it's good. That'll do. Right. <laughs> Neutral, unlock left. Alfie Galley, what's easier to drive? A passenger train or a freight train? Good question, Alfie. I would say they are completely different disciplines. Um, obviously, there's a lot of crossover between the two. I honestly feel driving a passenger train is like driving a tram. Some people call them milk floats. Um... One lever makes it stop, one lever makes it go, or if you're in a 377, back to go, forward to stop. They pretty much respond instantly, they do what you want them to do, they stop quickly, they accelerate quickly. Um, yeah, When you're driving a freight train and you've got 2,000 tonnes behind you and you're going up a steep gradient and it's slippery, you need to work the power handle, you need to make sure you're not putting the brakes in when you don't need, you don't, uh, need to. There are, uh, for example, there's a couple of places, so I'm pulling away with brakes on, that's not good. There's a couple of places um, we can get stuck. If you if you haven't got enough power in at the bottom of the hill where you're going too slow, you won't make it up the hill. Um, there are places on freight trains you will be coming towards red signals in full power. Um, because if you put the brakes in and the train stops, you won't get the train going again. So the, I, I think the actual in the actual act of driving, I think driving a freight train requires a little bit more... Um, skill and a little bit more patience on the controls than a passenger train. However, 
Um, however, with passenger trains, you've obviously got to worry about passengers. You've got to worry about stopping at stations. You've got your calling pattern, uh, stopping in the right place, opening the doors on the right side. So I do think there's there's a lot of crossover with the disciplines, but I think I think some things you don't have with freight, some things you've got with freight you haven't got with passenger and vice versa. Um, so obviously on freight as well, we're doing a lot more shunting, we're doing propelling moves, um, we're doing loading and unloading moves, so you could be unloading hoppers, you're moving forward one wagon at a time. We're doing um, ballast jobs and T-free possessions, um, engineering works and stuff like that, which you're not doing as a passenger driver. So yeah, I, I think largely they're there's a lot of crossover, um, but they're two different disciplines. So to say one's harder than the other, I don't think it's fair. Um, because I don't have to worry about where my next station is or how long my, tra I, how long my train is when I'm stopping at a station or um, the passenger alarm going off. Likewise, a passenger driver hasn't got to think, oh, I need a green at this one because I won't get up the hill. Or, you know, I've got a green here, but I better break just in case the next one's yellow because I'll spad. So, yeah, lo lo lots of kind of, lots of differences, really. Mark Hazeldean, yeah, good evening. It's um, definitely is a free one, free bud. Yeah, free one, free two oh nine to be precise. Heading down to New Haven Town. Thirty five coming up in a minute. Kieran Penny, do GBRF only preserve steam engine in the same way that DB own tornado? So Kieran, DB do not own tornado. Um, what DB do have is a steam operating license. So. Uh, DB have drivers that are qualified to drive steam engines, whereas GB do not. So I think the only two companies in the UK with steam operating licences are DB Cargo and West Coast Railways. I don't know if LSL have got a steam licence or not. But yeah, that's why normally on, on Tornado you'll get a DB crew on it, but it's not actually owned by DB. Pure lemon, I think I've got about four in my bag at the moment, Master Keys. Coming down for the 35. New Haven Town Yard to our right there. There's our 35. Uh, ever driven a class 101? No. I would like to drive a Class 101 with the gear levers. I've driven it on train sim and diesel rail car simulator. Diesel rail car simulator is a really good one to get if you haven't got it already, guys. You don't need a massively powerful computer to run it. And I think it's a really good simulator. Uh, might do some more streams on that in the future. New Haven Town. Let's get some brakes in. I've nearly gone a whole stream without overshooting a platform or having a spad or crashing. So, And it's been a long stream as well. Stop! <laughs> Spoke too soon almost. That's on the platform. Uh, right, we are into neutral. We are a free car train, free car mark platform on the left. Okay, guys, so. Let's play Locomotive Livery Location. We're going to do a big reveal. I think most people have got this now. I want to say thank you very much to uh, Logan for sending me this one in. Um, this one has been sitting in my inbox for absolutely ages. And I think quite a few people got this. LNER Class 82 DVT at King's Cross. So congratulations to absolutely everybody who got that right. Uh, I do have another game programmed in here as well. Oh, we've already done that one. We've done that one the other, the other day. The Manning Tree one. So yeah, that is today's one. LNER Class 82 DVT at King's Cross. Thank you very much, uh, Logan, for sending that in to me. Really appreciate that. If you want to send me any pictures for locomotive location livery, I've got a few in my inbox, but I am running a little bit low. You can send them to me via Discord. Send me a DM in Discord. There's a link in the description below for the Discord server. Or send me a DM in there, like I say. Or you can send them to me via my socials, which are on the screen for you right now. We are going round to New Haven Harbour. And then we get a nice 20 round the corner across. I always get these level crossings mixed up. 
one was Harbour Road and one was Beach Road and one of them's been closed and I signed the route and I can never remember which one's which. I think Harbour's the one that's open. I think Beach is the one that was closed. Yeah, Matthew, was that on... Did you send it via Insta or on um, Discord? I've been going through all my old Discord messages to try and find the pictures that people have sent in previously. All stopped. Into neutral. We are a free car train, free car mark platform on the left. <laughs> Ed C, it's not a class 82, the ATU XX is the carriage number. Yeah, I, 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 I can't really argue with that one, Ed. You are correct. <laughs> it said 82 on the side of it, and that's what I went for, but it is a DVT. Baked potato, does each low cost unit have its own master key? Uh, no. The, standish, the standard British Rail EP key, which is electro pneumatic key. Um, it used to be the brake key, so you'd use it to activate the braking systems. It's called an EP key, master key. Um, it's pretty standard. Lock doors, off we go. Off to Bishopstone. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty standard key. There are some locos that do have other keys. Um, EMD loco, 66s, 67, 69s, they all have a slightly different key. Um, but yeah, most, most stuff is the master key. So this is the level crossing that's closed, this first one here. That is the one that's no longer open. Oh, the water looks absolutely dreadful. Man, that is bad. And straight off to our right there is the New Haven Marine Aggregates Terminal, which is where I am going on Friday. And yes, yeah, someone did point out Brian Ferries. Someone at Dovetail has a sense of humour. Brian Ferries. Brilliant. New Haven Marine is closed. Yeah, Ed C, indeed. New Haven Marine Station is indeed closed. Um, you've, the platform's still there, and we use that as a turnback siding. If you carry on past the platform, there's a gate, um, and that'll take you into New Haven Marine Aggregates Terminal. Okay, Matthew, I'll, um, I am, like I say, I am picking up on all the, uh, all the old pictures on Discord, so I will keep having a look at those. Was it sent via direct message, bud? Or have I missed it in a channel somewhere? So on the whistle board we've just gone past, there was a local instruction in place that said you had to sound the horn for five seconds at that whistle board. Uh, I don't think that's been rescinded yet. I think that is still current. Jack Rainsbury, good evening. Yeah, it looks like the tide went out, Mark. I quite agree. Yeah, the, wa the water graphic is not good. But I guess you're not... Unless you're sort of in free cam, you're not really seeing it. So it's not worth wasting the resources on it. Trying to from Berkshire. Why did New Haven Marine get closed? Uh, it's right next to New Haven Town. Um, it's completely... It was originally there for when they had boat trains. Um... You used to get boat trains coming down from London. The passengers get off the train, transfer onto the boat. And it's just, it's a completely unnecessary station. Serves no purpose at all. I'm determined not to have tea and biscuits. Come on, break, break, break. Matthew L, what is the free step check? I shall show you. Overshooting the platform. Okay, so when we stop at a station, we want to check three things. We want to check the formation of our train. So on a 377, you'll have the my track, which will have your formation on it. You might see some drivers have got like little flip charts with the formation that they have over the dashboard. So the first thing we check is the formation. So in this case, we are a free car. The next thing we check is our position on the platform. So we're on the free car mark. And then we check what side the platform's on. So it's the platform on the right, the platform on the left. So you'll hear me say, free car train, free car mark, platform on the left. Then we open the doors. And the reason you do that is so you don't 
have what they call stop short incidences, which is where you're an eight car, you stop on the four car mark, you open your doors, and then all the passengers fall out the back because they've just opened the doors on their phone, haven't looked, there's no platform there. So that's why we do the, the three step check. There is some stations do have technology in place which will stop you opening doors that are not in platforms or stop you opening doors on the um, wrong side, but not everywhere does have those. Um, Debt Trains 43, did you join the strikes today? My company, um, firstly, being a driver, I'm represented by the ASLEF union, and it was the RMT union that were on strike today. My company are not in dispute with ASLEF. We are all happy families at the moment, so um, I will not be going on strike. My company is not in dispute. I I won't go too much into it or give my opinions. I don't like to get too political in the streams. Um, yeah, but yeah, my I I am not in dispute. My company is not in dispute. Pure lemon. No, I never I never did to be honest with you, bud. Um, no, it doesn't matter anyway. It's just one of those things. I, fi I find in life that if you spend too much time worrying about the small things, you miss out on the big things. So I'm not, I'm not going to worry about it. Ed C. Seaford Platform 2 next, indeed. Mustn't forget the 15 as we go in. There are TPWS loops on this in real life. If you come up to it too fast, it will take you out. This track here was relayed recently, and I was on the um, auto baluster wagons that dropped the ballast after the track was relayed. That was an interesting shift. I left the job overrun, and I ended up leaving site about three hours late. It mucked a lot of stuff up. There was a freight train going into New Haven Marine that day, and it ended up going to Hamden Park to run round. I think that's the first time that's ever happened. Would have been quite a sight. So there's our 15. 15 at the platform ramps. Terminal station is always good. Stu, evening. Yeah, I'm very good, sir. How are you? Baked potato. TPWS is train protection warning system. The idea of TPWS is if you approach a red signal too fast or a speed restriction too fast, it will automatically apply the emergency brakes. If you go past a red signal, um, it will automatically apply the emergency brakes as well. Not everywhere is fitted with it, but most high-risk locations are fitted. It will not necessarily prevent you from going past a signal, um, but the idea of the system is it will stop you within a safe distance known as an overlap um, beyond the signal. So you'll notice at most junctions and stuff, the signal isn't right on top of the junction. There's a distance between the signal and the junction. Um, and the reason for that is if a driver spads, it gives the system sufficient time to stop the train um, before the train reaches the junction and, and potentially causes a collision. So we are going to go into brake step three. Full service on this. We're going to set our DRA. We're going to go into neutral. Carry out our three step check. We are a free car train. We are on the buffer stops. And the platform is on the left. And we are done. Round to tail lights. Into off. Key out. Oh. <laughs> what, what am I doing? What am I doing? Out we go. And there she is. 3-1-3. Three, three. Have we got another gold medal? Oh! <laughs> I thought I was going to have a hat trick. I'd had two gold medal runs, got a silver medal. But we went the whole stream without tea and biscuits, which has got to be. It's got to be a first, isn't it? I'm, I'm playing, playing that, that because, because I, I failed fa in as much that I didn't get anything. I, I, I failed to have tea and biscuits with the manager. So I had to have tea and biscuits with the manager. But there we go. 
There we go, guys. Quite a long stream tonight, but quite enjoyable. I know I haven't streamed for quite a long time, so um, really great. Great to have so many of you in tonight as well. 77 of you lovely people still in at um, 20 to 20 to 11. Crikey, um, which is really great. Don't forget to like and subscribe. That would be absolutely awesome. Do check out the GSMR rules videos that I put out recently and some of my other train driver vlogs if you're interested in that sort of thing. Um, I am going to jump in the Discord server now, guys, um, and I'm going to be streaming... Stepford County Railways on SCR, which is my first time playing it, um, so I'm going to be talking through that. So if you want to go over to the Discord server, there's an invitation link in the description below. I'll put that on the screen again. Um, you're more than welcome to jump over there and uh, and watch me kind of completely and utterly bugger that up. So there will be, there will be an open voice chat on that as well. So if you want to jump in the voice chat and have a have a casual chat with me, you're more than welcome to do on that one. Social media channels on the screen now. Be absolutely brilliant to see you over on my uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that sort of stuff. And uh, this is the point of the stream where I just start rabbiting because I have nothing to say. So what I'm going to do is press that button there. I'm going to thank you all very, very much for joining me. It's been an absolute privilege. And I hope to see you all in the next stream. Until the next one, create, share, and bye.